spearfishing has or will strike your business, wreaking havoc on your employees, brand, and your bottom line. Spearfishing can't be stopped by traditional email security solutions because messages appear to be legitimate from your boss, a trusted colleague, or a vendor asking you to wire money, confirm login credentials, or worse. Barracuda Sentinel is artificial intelligence for real-time spear phishing and cyber fraud defense. Reclaim your email in minutes with zero impact on network performance. Visit barracuda.com slash AI. On the line with me, I love doing Sports Center with him, particularly post fight when he has to school me and remind me that I'm trying to be slick with my college educated self. I love it. I'm talking about the great Teddy Atlas. He's on the line with yours truly right now. What's up, buddy? How you doing, man? Hey, Stephen. How are you? I'm doing great. It's always good to talk to you. Talk to me about this fight coming up Saturday night. Errol Spence Jr. against uh, L- Lamont Peterson on Showtime. Your thoughts about that? I mean, for me, Spence is a monster. He's a beast. My son works for the Oakland Raiders, and he uses uh, that kind of verbiage over there in the NFL. They, okay. When they want to compliment somebody, the guy's a beast. And for me, the best way I could compliment Spence, usually I say things that are a little bit more complex sometimes, but um, it gets it gets right to the point. He's a beast and a smart beast. See, when I train fighters, sometimes I say like to Timothy Bradley, I say, look, we're going to be a monster in this fight, but we're going to be a smart monster. He's a smart monster. He's technically solid. He was an Olympian. Uh, he fought the best in the world in the Olympics internationally. Uh, so he knows he belongs at that level. He learned how to fight. He's a southpaw on top of it. He's physically so strong. I don't know how he makes welterweight. He's a big, strong guy. But most importantly, he's got that attitude. He's got attitude that I'm going to get you. You know, I'm going to get you, and you are not going to stop me. I remember years ago, Custom Honor, my mentor used to tell me, very few people get supreme confidence. Very few. The only two he ever saw that he thought had it was Muhammad Ali, Sugar Ray Robinson. And I, I think that I've seen certain guys that come very close to that supreme confidence. And Spence might be one of those guys that really means in supreme confidence that I don't think you can lose. I don't think I can lose. I don't think there's any way that I will not find a way, no matter what it takes, to win this fight. And having said that, he's fighting a guy in Peterson who's a solid guy. He's a solid guy. His MO is a little similar to Spence. You know, he likes to go after you. He likes to press the action. He likes to go downstairs, you know, to the basement. But the only difference is he's doing it with a guy who does all those things much, much better at a much higher level. Spence goes downstairs to the body. That, that's his forte. That, you know, that's what he all loves right. to do. But he doesn't just go downstairs. He takes over the whole floor. I mean, so at the end of the day, I see Spence, even with a solid Peterson in front of him, I see Spence getting him out of there. Well, let me ask you this, Teddy. Has he really, uh, Errol Spence Jr., I love him. He's my favorite right now, him and Terrence Crawford. But I got to ask you, has he really been tested? Because even though he beat Kell Brook, that was after Kell Brook got softened up, particularly his eye socket against Triple G. He fought Triple G before he fought Errol Spence Jr. I thought if he had, had he fought Errol Spence Jr. before the Triple G fight, had he, had had Kell Brook never had the Triple G fight, then I think Errol Spence Jr. might have had a toughest a tougher matchup against him. What do you say to that? There's my college friend with that college <laughs> wit. There he is. Yeah, of course you're going to come with the right question. Look, has he been completely, completely tested? In my eyes. Very close, if if not completely very close, not just in a Brook fight, which you're right, he got damaged, he got softened up against Golovkin, no doubt about it, but he was he's still a big welterweight, he's a solid welterweight, before that he was undefeated, he was fighting in his home country, you fight in your home country, you have a lot more going for you, you have a whole country you don't want to let down, that is not an easy task for anybody but there's a guy with 200, 250 amateur fights. He fought the best in the world. He fought some of these guys that are world champions now when they were amateurs. You're still beating really good fighters, even though they're only three-round fights. So in that way, I believe what I see. I believe what I'm getting and spent. I believe he's everything that I said the first five minutes of this interview. And I believe that he is in the most talented 
weight class there is. The most competitive, talented in boxing right now, the welterweight class. I mean, that welterweight class is no joke. I mean, you got guys like Thurman, you got you got Danny Garcia, you got Crawford, who you just said. Yep. I mean, you you have a weight class there that is so so full. I I know there's somebody I'm missing right now. You got Thurman, you got Spence, yeah, yeah, Sean you got, Porter. Sean Porter's tough. You he's got tough. Sean Porter. Porter. He's he's a little bit below those guys. Yeah, but, but he's tough. He's a, he's a tough guy. He's a load. He's a guy that brings it all the time. Well, and and in Thurman, I mean, you might have the best athlete in boxing. Well, I mean, well, stay he's right a there. really athletic stay, guy who stay can right go inside there. outside. Ted, Teddy, stay right there with Keith Thurman. We're talking to the great Teddy Atlas, box, boxing analyst extraordinaire, right here with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. I spoke to Errol Spence on first take yesterday. He's about to come on his radio show after I hang up with you. This man sets up there and he says, Keith Thurman, he thinks Keith Thurman is trying to duck him. That's who he really, really wants. Is that just hyperbole? Is that just talking because you're trying to coax him into the big money fight? Or do you believe that Keith Thurman may be avoiding Errol Spence Jr.? See, that's a good question. I think that Thurman is a smart guy. If you're going to be a champion, you're going to be a guy that that Stephen A. and Teddy Allen is going to spend time talking about. You know what? you got to be more than just that beast. Like I said before, you got to be a smart monster. He's a smart guy. He's not going to take that fight now until it's big enough, until the money's there, until everything else is out of the way, and that's the last option, and it's the right option, of course. So in that way, does that answer your question? Does that mean he's dunking him? Yeah, maybe he is dunking him. Does that mean he's afraid of him? No, not in well, that way. It just means that it does not make any sense for Keith Thurman right well, now, undefeated Keith Thurman right now, to be fighting a guy like Spence. Well, let me tell you why I think it makes sense to me, Teddy. Keith Thurman has already fought Danny Garcia. He's already fought Sean Porter. So what I'm saying is, who else is left out there for Keith Thurman to fight? That's the way I'm looking at it. Yeah, you know what? In his mind, as good as these guys are, they can still, it's kind of like as good as that steak is, they can still use a couple minutes on a barbecue, on a stove. They could just use a couple more minutes. And that's how he's thinking of it. He's thinking, you know, Spence is terrific. I know how good he is. I know what I have to deal with. But let him get a little bigger. Let him win this fight. Let him win another fight. Let him get a little bit bigger. And then also... He's coming off shoulder surgery. Let me, and that being Thurman, obviously, let me get another fight. Let me make another payday, and let's put this down the road a little bit, a little bit. Teddy Atlas right here with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. One of my last questions coming up. Terrence Crawford obviously is considered one of the best pound-for-pound fighters, if not the best pound-for-pound fighter in the world, even though some people would say Lomachenko is that dude. But you look at Terrence Crawford, he's absolutely sensational. He has decided to move up from the junior welterweight division to this division with Errol Spence Jr. He's going to fight Joe Horn. Everybody's expecting him to beat the Australian. And then after that, he sat up there and told me, Keith Thurman, Errol Spence Jr., Either one of them is fine with him. How do you believe Terrence Crawford is going to do on the elevated level of going up seven pounds to the welterweight division? And how soon do you think he'll end up fighting Thurman or Errol Spence Jr.? Well, yes, it's the right way because it's it's attached to weight. You know, the only the only way that he doesn't have his way at the next division the way he did at the last division because he is that good. There's no doubt about it. The, his skill sets are there and his mind is there. You know, he's a guy who's reliable, he's consistent, he's mentally tough, he's been tested. So the only way that he doesn't get to that place and dominate the welterweights the way he did below that is size. Is if these guys, because they're really good and they're bigger. You know, that, that would be a hell of a fight to see Crawford on the outside trying to keep Spence from coming in, trying to see him keep him from eating up real estate and eating him up next, right after that real estate, being able to counter-punch him, nail him big shots because he's a big puncher, being able to do all of that before he gets close to him. That would be a hell of a fight. Matter of fact, I know your main sport, I mean, you're good at everything, but your main sport is the NBA. For me, comparing Crawford and Spence, that's kind of like going and comparing LeBron James and Kevin Durant. It really is, because LeBron James would, of course, be spent. Physical, a physical monster, and obviously he has the skill set. Kevin Durant, longer, taller, faster, more slick. That's what you would be getting. You would be getting LeBron James, and you would be getting Kevin Durant. Who's better one-on-one? 
Teddy Atlas, I got to put you on the spot here, sir, because based on your synopsis, based on based on your breakdown, you seem to believe that Errol Spence Jr. and Terrence Crawford are on an elevated level over Keith Thurman. Am I reading that correctly? No, it's just the inactivity. I mean, I I really like Thurman. I think he's the probably the most athletic guy. Pure athletic guy, inside, outside, legs. He could do all those things. These guys could do one thing or the other, but not as well, not not quite as versatile as, as Keith Thurman. I think he's the most athletic guy there is right now. The only thing about him, I mentioned it earlier, he's really smart. I mean, all these guys are smart in different ways, but he's really smart. I wonder how much he's dedicated to staying in this sport. That's the only thing that hits me a little bit when I look at him is how that he's made money already, you know, in a, in a short period of time. He's accomplished a lot in a short period of time. He's got a lot in front of him if he wants to. But how dedicated to the grind of the sport, to really, really the legacy, being the best in boxing, going through all the blood, sweat, and tears that's still in front of him, all the pain that's still in front of him. How dedicated is he really to that? I'm not right. positive. I'll close it by saying this. I think Errol Spence would beat Keith Thurman, and I think Terrence Crawford, my only reservation about him is whether or not he'd be too small. But skill-wise, I think he's better than Thurman. I like Thurman a lot, but I don't think he's these two. Thanks a lot, Teddy. I appreciate you, buddy, as always. Thanks so much. My pleasure, Stephen. All right, the one and only Teddy Atlas right here with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. Hello, I'd like to deposit this to checking. Fate is a fickle master. What? The future is uncertain. Okay, and what's my account balance? Ah, the horizon is cloudy. I see a long, treacherous voyage Um, filled with great peril. Look, can I just get a deposit slip or something? A fortune bank teller. Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to GEICO. I see a yellow-eyed serpent and a low APR. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more.